Hey, what's up? Like, totally time for 90210. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the 90210 show. My name is Mark. With me, as always, is my wife, Carol. How are you today, Carol? Hey, what's up? Not much. It's been a good week here. It's April 15th. It's tax day, everyone. Get your Boo. taxes in. April 15th, 1999. The last time you're going to do taxes in the 90s. Or maybe ever. Who um, knows what will happen. Oh, my God. <laughs> Y2K <laughs> will destroy all of your tax data. There you go. That would be cool if your taxes were just eliminated because of Y2K. That'd be something. I'd be okay with that. It'd be something. Not all the nuclear missiles launching because of Y2K. That's not going to happen. Is the world going to end because of Y2K? Are people stupid? Yes. Yes. Uh, Anyway, so speaking of stupid people, we watched 90210, everyone. Got (laughs) them. I don't remember what this episode was called. It was something like uh, your options Options, are... To die or not to die or something. I think it was the options are. The options are. Uh. Stick a tube down your throat or in your ass. Oh, my God. So vile. Yeah. Ooh. Well, I mean, for some people. I mean, there you can stick some things up your ass, I guess, but not a tube. Come on. Wow. <laughs> but a tube-shaped object. Um, have you ever had an enema? No. Because that's, that's the tube in your butt. I don't the want enema. an enema. But you've had a tube down your throat. Yes. A medical tube, everyone. Relax. Yes, Get your I have. Mine's out of the gutter. Thank you for the memories. Um, yeah, not fun, right? No. Thanks for the memories. That's Bob Hope. <clears throat> no, if ever, anybody ever um, intubated me against my will. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I've never intubated you off. against your will. <laughs> uh, I thought you were. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you want that now? What? Sounded what? Wait, was that was that like a sweet noise? Like, oh, that's a sweet thing that you you haven't forced anything down. It my was like a, a sound of sympathy for Kelly's grandfather. Oh, okay. Because I was about to you know be like, oh, but for Kelly's grandpa. But then yeah. you just started talking. Let's talk. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> How dare I on this show where all we do is talk? I know what is wrong with you. Uh, but yeah, Kelly's grandfather, I guess let's start there. Let's start with Kelly's storyline and her, her grandfather's storyline. Her grandfather is dying from emphysema. Well, and like last episode, I believe is when this came up where like her mom did on the last episode of soap, (laughs) her mom was supposed to be his power of attorney and was supposed to like, you know, follow his living will, which is what you're supposed to do. Yes. Yeah. And his living will said he doesn't want any extraordinary measures. He, he doesn't, doesn't want to be hooked live. up to machines. He just, you know, he wants yeah. them to let him go. Right. And the mom wouldn't do that. So he made Kelly his power of attorney because she was like, oh, my gosh, that's so wrong of mom. Grandpa, you should know she's not going to listen. So the first thing that happens <laughs> is she gets a phone call saying like, hey, guess what? From her mom. Guess what? Grandpa's dying. Yeah. And they need to intubate him. What do you want to do? You want to shove a tube down his throat? If you don't, he's going to die. So she channels her inner rapist and says, put that tube down his throat. <laughs> it, I was so disappointed in her. Like, she just gave in, like, immediately mm-hmm. to yeah. the pressure. Her mom's like, it's, you know, what? He, like, he's going to die without it. He's like, he's he's so strong. He's been so good the last couple of weeks. He, he could have he could have weeks left or even Months. hours. <laughs> Right. No, she says weeks, months. Like yeah. he wants to be let go. Let him fucking go. Yeah, dude's smoked enough. And then when she goes to see him later, mm-hmm. like he is alert-ish, but on this thing, they've had to sedate him and mm-hmm. stuff. Like, can you imagine being aware? Like after you told them you don't want this shit, yeah, and they put it down your throat anyway. Well, two incredibly funny things happen. So one, uh, while Kelly's on the phone. She's like, let me talk to the doctor. And this (laughs) guy gets on the phone and just says, hi, I'm the doctor. (laughs) Not not a name or anything. This is Dr. Miller. I'm the doctor. So weird. It was comedic timing. Yeah, it was good. And uh, so then they're like, uh, when she gets to the hospital after they've intubated him, they she's like, 
Yeah, uh, you know, you know, it's a be good idea to get a chalkboard in there and some chalk, and they're like, "What?" To communicate with them, and so he can scratch out "kill me," right? <laughs> Giant capital letters. Yeah, because he might never come off the intubator. Mm-hmm. So the intubator is That's, that what it's called? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, maybe it's like, I'm thinking of the incubator. I don't know. I know it's called intubation. Right. He yeah. may never come off the machine. Right. So uh, she has to deal with that. Like they, they're like, here, he's going to communicate with you. Mm. He's hooked up to this machine that he didn't want to be hooked up to, and he might never come off. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's refusing to eat, and he pulls out the tube himself. Right, he pulls out the tube himself, but it's it's okay because he's now able to breathe on his own. The doctor's like, it's okay. This happens sometimes. <laughs> like, yeah, for the people you're torturing in the fucking hospital. <laughs> it's like that scene from the matrix where he's just, <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, he says like the doctor seems very into just shoving things into this old man. <laughs> he's like, he does. <laughs> yeah. We well, like, he's refusing to eat. Oh, he doesn't like hospital food. Let's, let's shove a feeding tube down his throat. Then I guess. We'll, we'll, Down his we'll, nose. It goes in your nose. Yeah. We'll, we'll get some uh, We'll get some of those cans of Nestle fucking intubation oh. liquid. I don't know if you've ever seen them, but they're, they are made by the Nestle Corporation yeah. for whatever reason. Probably the worst thing that they make. Other, <laughs> Probably. Other than uh, uh, Chunky Bar, I guess. It does it. bypass all your palate, so I guess it doesn't matter. Right. But it's a, just a, like, it's, it comes in a little can. It's just a thick liquid. I worked in a hospital once. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. I'm so grossed out, right? I'm just thinking about this. <laughs> Pour it in the bag, down the gullet. Anyway, so they're like, finally, Kelly takes a stand, and she's like, you know what? Well, yeah, when she sees they've also tied him to the bed. He's in soft restraints <laughs> because he pulled his tube. But they're like, right. it was for his own good. He was trying to get out of here. <laughs> he keeps getting up. Right, he was talking about living his own life or something, <laughs> making his own decisions. We're not sure. <laughs> And Kelly's like, oh, my God, get these off of him. Seriously, the guy's brain is not adult. Right. Like, when he talks later, he's like, oh, my God, I hate this. Like, he's just, <laughs> he's, he's just completely, <laughs> but they're like, it's like he pulled the tube out and they don't talk to him at all. They're just like, get him in restraints. <laughs> but I'm, I'm completely alert and shut up. <laughs> What kind yeah. of hospital is like, this? She shouldn't even be making decisions for him because he's, con- he's still capable of making exactly. decisions. <laughs> Yeah, it's really bizarre. Oh, yeah, it's weird. But yeah, so like like you were saying, she does come to her senses. She finally decides that... How much do we want to talk about... What's his name? Is his name Matt? I think so, yeah. A lawyer? Yeah. Uh, how much do we want to talk about his storyline in, intertwined with this storyline? Because it does a little bit. He much to do with it, really. Well, she... Yeah, and that's the thing is... Uh, that's maybe why I want to... We can talk I, about it separately, I think. Okay. I was going to say that's maybe why I want to touch on it here because th- there's not much to it. Mm. And everything that happens with his storyline coincides with her storyline. Okay. Like, she, he's... At one point, he's smoking a cigarette. We see him smoking. He's he always does all sm- the smoking. He's always smoking now. He's like, I started smoking it, so apparently he had quit before. Because the uh, this show is taking a hard line against tobacco, I guess, for some reason. Although they're showing someone smoke on camera, which is also not great. Yeah, that like makes people who quit smoking want to smoke. Just FYI, thanks for that. Right. Remember when we used to smoke everyone? <laughs> Way back when this thing started. Yeah, please please stop making us watch people smoke. Thank you. Um, But then... He's struggling with money, as we know, mm. and some so du- spend it on cigarettes. Some dude that he he knows or whatever went to law school with, used to work with or whatever, is a lawyer for tobacco now, and he sees him in the the elevator, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm I'm here to take a deposition for someone who's dying <laughs> for this lawsuit that uh, they're trying to do," and he's like, "Oh, they're trying to sue Big Tobacco or whatever." Oh, yeah. Losing battle. You know, it was just a year ago, not quite, less than a year ago, it was in November of last year, where the tobacco industry lost that, that big case, the master's settlement agreement or whatever what the hell it was mm-hmm. called, where the state's attorney generals uh, of 46 states sued them for health care costs associated with smoking. Right. And they lost. They had to pay billions of dollars. And agree to curtail a lot of advertising and shit. Yeah. So, like, it's weird to 
you know, in light of that, to be like, oh, yeah, they, they fucking, they lose or whatever all the time. They just, Tobacco just lost a case. Yeah. But he's like, yeah, it's a lot of billable hours. It's a lot of money. You should come over and do it for us. And so he does for five seconds of this episode. And then one nurse says, oh, you're trash because you work for the tobacco company. And he's like, mm, I'm quitting. I'm quitting smoking. And I'm quitting working in the tobacco company because I talked to your grandfather twice. And what a guy. Well, and I don't think it was even the nurse so much as it was Kelly because Kelly lays it on thick. Like She does. Although, like, later she's like, no, I understand it's a job or whatever. But then he quits after talking to the grandpa. Because he's like, he said earlier, he like, he says, he's like, hey, your grandpa's got emphysema. You know, I understand you're pissed off at tobacco or whatever. That, that's his choice. He knew the risks. Yeah. But did he? He pulls out the... The pack of cigarettes. He's like, see, there's a warning right here on the cigarette mm-hmm. box. But did he? Because he looks old enough to have started smoking in like the 50s. Yeah, before they knew. When doctors were telling you to smoke. Why and were shit? doctors telling you to smoke? That's it, commercials. But I mean, like, why? I mean, I get that they didn't know it caused cancer. Four out of five doctors. But there couldn't be a time where a doctor would think, yes, this is a good idea. Let's breathe smoke into our lungs. Four out of five doctors recommend lucky strikes. It's ridiculous. Here's the thing. There was a time, though, because they used to tell pregnant women to smoke to calm their nerves. That's ridiculous. To relax and stuff like that. And they did know it caused cancer. The tobacco companies did. That's one of the things that came out into this in this fucking case. And there's probably going to be more lawsuits based on that. But like memos from back in like the the late fifties and the sixties and shit show like, oh yeah, our research shows this causes cancer, but we're going to lie. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So, fucking disgusting tobacco companies. <clears throat> but but anyways, like I'm saying, this guy probably smoked during that started smoking during that time. So I don't. If you like, we started smoking after that, and luck, and luckily we gave it up and everything. But I don't, I, I just, I don't think that there's any, there shouldn't be any guilt associated with people that started smoking in the fifties when people were like, oh yeah, doctors were were advertising it and all that shit. I think he started smoking before then, even like he's probably like eighty. Yeah, and this is like. You know, fucking 1998, right? So, well, I believe this episode we're not far behind. 99, whatever. It's we're, we're not we're not far. Be- it's 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 December. Yeah, it's Dece- that's December of 98 is when this episode came out. So it was only like a few months ago. Yeah. So he was probably born in the 19 teens. Yeah, maybe. And he might have started smoking in like the 30s or even yeah. the 20s. Or I the, mean, or the 40s. You know. Yeah, I guess. I mean. I guess people started smoking that late, I don't know. but he probably didn't wait until the 20s. fucking fifties. Well, that's true. I guess. I guess at, during that time they started smoking at like fifteen or whatever. Yeah. Right? I started when I was thirteen. Yeah. So. Well, you know, you were always advanced for your age, though. <laughs> yeah, that's real advanced. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they she decides. Okay, we're 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 letting him go. The doctor's like, she's like, how do we let? How do we get him out of here? And I would discharge him. He's like. That I would have to medically advise against that. And it's like, yeah, you just want to keep sticking things in them. We know. <laughs> right? We you know, know what you're about, know? doctor. <laughs> That's why you won't even give your name. So you can't be trapped. You're just the doctor. Has he not heard of hospice? I mean, and like when they take the grandpa out of the hospital. Yeah. And they roll into Kelly's house. Mm-hmm. Well, it's he, actually, I think it's the mom's oh, house. Oh, it's the, mom, the mom's house. He's like, wait, why are we here? I want to go to the hospice. Yeah, so well, like, Let's get to the hospice. I want to like, die. Obviously, it was a discussion at Where's some point. Where's the Drano? So how is he like, I medically advise against this, when the man's dying and he wants hospice? Mm-hmm. What? That's like malpractice to be like, I medically advise against hospice. I, Don't die comfortably. Right? Yeah, 100%. Let me keep shoving everything in every orifice of your body. And that guy has a living will. Do they even need to call the power of attorney? Can't they just see it and be like, hey, it's... Right. Yeah, people who don't have powers of attorney fill those out so they have something to speak for them. Yeah. Like, they could have read that and said, oh, he doesn't want any extraordinary measures. We won't do anything. Yeah, it's weird. (laughs) The whole thing's they don't understand anything about medical stuff. Like, this would happen in a situation where it's like, okay, your power of attorney, did he ever tell you what he wanted? He wrote it down. Yeah. It's right there. (laughs) (laughs) But so, he gets discharged. They they turn on the, the Christmas tree or whatever. And which is sad. I mean, that, that teared me up a little bit. Yeah. It's like he gets to have his Christmas, even though it's a couple weeks away. They yeah. Say. Cause they're like, he, he's not going to be there. <laughs> and she's like, do you want us to open the presents now or, 
or wait. And he's like, fucking open them now. <laughs> yeah. Don't buy any green bananas for me. What the hell? So uh, the, the mom says she's going to take care of him instead of him going to hospice because she has enough money to stay at home and just you know be with him or whatever. Yeah. So that's that's he'll, he'll die probably next episode or whatever, but they get their little closure there. And that's kind of Kelly's arc goes through that and it also intersects with Dylan a little bit because mm-hmm. she's like, Dylan, take Calgon, take me away. Yeah, like she I don't like this. I don't like their relationship. It's kind of like she's just using him like to forget about things. Yeah. And he's going through some shit. Like, he could use, you know, to lean on her a little bit, too. Seriously, he is. Let's go to him next. Okay. So, he's driving around in the car, and I did not remember that this this happened, but he's driving around in the car where his wife was killed. Yeah, his 1955 Porsche. So, yeah, why is he driving around in that car? Well, apparently it was in storage from when he moved to Europe and, you know, quote, moved to Europe, Mm -hmm. did the terrible movie Eight Seconds. Uh, And so he comes back and he replaces the windshield, which still has bullet holes in it for some reason. Like, it's just been chilling there with bullet holes in it. Well, I mean, if you're not going to drive it, why fix it? I guess. But so he replaces it and starts driving again, that classic 1955 Porsche. A gorgeous car yeah he pulls it into the after dark and everybody's looking at it. oh what a sweet car and these yeah. young kids are there and they're like oh my god this this car looks great wow the young kids sound like 1930s news reporters cool. <laughs> yes what a scoop <laughs> <laughs> um and then in the club in uh, the club in the club uh, <laughs> thank you <laughs> he gets into an argument with these uh young whippersnappers because they're because they're harassing, uh, what's her name? Sophie? Claire. Claire. No. Right? No, no. no. <laughs> we, t- we both <laughs> named two women that are no longer on the show. Oh, my God. The cousin. What is her name? Uh, Cindy? Mindy? A- Abigail? I don't know. I don't know her name either. Donna's cousin. Vanessa Marcelli? Marcel? Marcelli? Is that supposed to be the actress's name? That's the, her name. It's not supposed to be. It is. <laughs> You're not saying a whole name here. So. But I can't I can't remember what her name is. It's not. Is it Abigail? I have no idea. Abby. No clue. We're just going to call her Vanessa for now. What was up with this? Okay, they were making fun of her tattoo. What was her tattoo? Like, I didn't get a good look at it. I didn't get a good look at it either. It seems like it must be something awful because then later in the episode, she's having it removed. Yeah, it's weird. But she's, yeah, they're they're like kind of like, first they're hitting on her and then Mm -hmm. like teasing her and stuff like that. Because I guess because she rejected them, they had to be dicks about it. Like, And Dylan comes face to face with Noah. I expected like the I expected the film to like split in two or something like that. It was like uh, Freaky Friday yeah. or um, the the one with the Haley what not, what's her name uh, Haley Mills Haley Mills and Haley Mills the Parent Trap yeah okay um but yeah because it's there there that was the guy that came to replace him so it's yeah. like the zoo so guys like hey I'm the, I'm the alpha around here I, I'm the alpha around here. <laughs> So when these guys are harassing her, uh, Noah gets the baseball bat out from behind the bar. Apparently, he didn't replace the gun, so that's right. good. He's got a bat now. Well, what happens is is that Dylan punches the kid, mm-hmm. and they start to get into a fight. And then Noah brings out the bat, slams it on the thing, and says, "Break it up, you two, or you'll wish I had called the police." And then Dylan says, "Hey, I can fight my own fights, or I don't need you. Fuck you." He does not like Noah. No, he didn't like being uh, assisted. Mm-hmm. Um, which like, I think that was kind of ridiculous. Like it's Noah's bar and he had your back. So yeah. back off there, sir. By the way, it looked like, uh, what's her name? Vanessa's cousin, the cousin. It looks like the cousin. It looks like we're just going to call her cousin. It looks like Noah needs to replace the stool. The cousin is sitting on after Dylan steps up and, and punches that guy for her. Cause they close up on her face <laughs> and she yeah. looks like. Oh, my God. Yeah, there's like the, isn't he dreamy all mm. over her face? Yeah. Yeah. It was it was good uh, facial acting on her part. Yeah, a good facting. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, Dylan, the, those, those kids go outside and they start beating the shit out of the car. Yeah, they slash a tire. They break the windshield again. The guy, yeah, the guy's got a knife. The one kid's got a knife. And he's, he's like, fuck this tire. And, and, and stabs the tire. And then Dylan comes out 
and runs over to him, punches one of them, and then grabs the guy that had the knife and holds his own knife against his throat and says, only one of us is afraid to die. <laughs> that was a great line, actually. <laughs> But then by by the time that happened, the cousin had come out, and she's like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, so um, then he decides to get rid of the car. Mm-hmm. So, I mean. He sells it to some guy for whatever. He, a check and some <clears throat> cash. He fixes it up again first, and mm. and everybody's offering to help him, and he doesn't want anybody to help. He's being Mr. Tough Guy. Yeah. Remember from last time, he's staying at David's house. Yeah. And for some reason, Noah's just always over at David's house. I don't know. It's just where the guys hang out, I guess. I don't know. But he's... so Steve's yeah, he's, there. David's there. Noah's there. They all <laughs> offer to help him. Dylan's trying to fix it in the garage, and Noah's like, hey, you got some holes over here. If you want to do something about that. Yeah, he points out the holes in the upholstery from the bullets. And he's like, fuck you. Get out of here. So he mentions that to, to Donna later, I think, and she's like, yeah, that's those were where his wife got shot. Yeah, Donna, Donna tells both Noah and the cousin mm-hmm. what happened. Like and because the, they're both like, oh my god, yeah. And then, so yeah, he sells the. He, well, first of all, he's laying in bed and he's having a dream about. There's several flashbacks. There's a couple really just poorly constructed transitions where Dylan is is standing there and he's like, oh, and like it, it cl- closes up on his face. And yeah, then he does, does not the, do that well. And then does the fade to like the memory, mm-hmm. and it's him like holding. The Noxima girl, you know, mm-hmm. in his arms and everything. Uh, and it's just, it looks horrible. His face acting, his facting is not <laughs> as good as the cousins. No. And although in general, I think he's a decent actor. He is, but he cannot do like grief and no. like a stress. And so like he doesn't do those emotions well. Exactly. Like when his dad got shot or blew up, blown up <laughs> and he fell to the ground crying and yeah. screaming like he looked awful. He but, looked like a Muppet. Yeah, exactly. Like Noah. Well, that's the thing is like when he looks at Noah, it's like looking at a mirror. Like <laughs> but it's like looking at a funhouse mirror. <laughs> right. You know, it's a distorted version of Dylan's face. But it was like the flip hop top head Muppet. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But so that's bad. But also bad is the artificial zoom in, mm-hmm. the quick zoom in, and then the transition to it's all just really badly constructed. But anyway, so they do that a couple times. Well, one time he's having a dream, and he starts screaming and everything. And Noah's just there again, runs into his bedroom, and he's like, David left the door open or something. I heard you screaming. Why were you outside their house? They have a psychic connection. (laughs) I felt your pain. Like Tomak and Zamet. Oh, my God. From uh, G.I. Joe. (laughs) Yeah, Noah's trying to be be his friend, I guess. And then he's like, hey, I, I... I, I didn't know about the 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 girl got killed or whatever. Like I've had my own tragic backstory in a car. Uh, also, <laughs> they gave me the same backstory, <laughs> so I know what it's like. And he's like, oh, "Okay, whatever, get the fuck out of here." And then he sells the car to some Natalie dressed person, and <laughs> you don't know that Natalie dressed. Yeah, like 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 Natty, you know. You never heard that word before? It's like Nope, Grandpa has not like heard fancy, that. Fancily dressed. Okay. Anyway, so then he starts burning the money. Yeah, this was so fucked up. He goes to a trash can fire or whatever, a dumpster fire. What's it, what the fuck they call it? Those the yeah, can, a trash can the bear, fire. Yeah. The, yeah, the barrel can fire. Where, where like homeless people burn garbage to stay warm. Yeah, you've seen movies. Huh. And so he's like, I'm. Th- I, I the first thing I said is maybe some of those homeless people there want that money, right? But like, how rude is that? But he's burning it, and then some guy comes up to him. And he's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" He's like, "I'm burning my wife's ashes." And so that's what your wife meant to you is money or the car, the car which you had prior to that relationship. It's not like that was a wedding gift. Like it's weird. I don't know, but, well, because he associated it with her because she got killed there. Like, I kind I of get it, but it was not the appropriate place for that. It's a reach. Yeah, and not the appropriate place. Now, he's a millionaire. Right. So, whatever money means nothing to him, obviously, he could wipe his ass with it. Um, But he shouldn't be doing it around a bunch of poor people. Right. And then one of the poor people, who's an entrepreneur, comes <laughs> up to him and says, 
hey, you must be looking for something because nobody comes to this place unless they're looking for something. And I pointed out earlier, he's in the after Tark and he gets a beer thrown at him. Mm -hmm. Uh, The cousin, when he's fixing the car, she comes over and brings him a beer and pizza. Mm -hmm. And she's like, this is for drink and this is for food and this is for helping me. And he's like, yeah, you only dated boys, huh? And she's like, what? And he's like, a low cut top and pizza. And you think that's like... That's going to attract you. And she's like, I've had boyfriends. And he's like, yeah, boys, even in a man like me. <laughs> but yeah, so he is definitely drinking. Again. And, and yeah, so like I, I was like, what the fuck? He's an alcoholic. Why is he drinking? But the guy's like, oh, what do you want? Is he, it's like he plays 20 questions with him. He's like, oh, I got a lot of stuff. I got smoke. And he, like he looks at him like, uh-huh. <laughs> I got a uh, crack. Hmm. I got meth. Mm. I got smack. And Dylan's like, mm. and he's like, oh, okay. So he comes. And then he's like, so you want some heroin? Yeah. Just so you all yeah, know. We all know what smack is. We've all seen homicide life on the streets. And he uh, he grabs one of the flaming $100 bills out of his hand and comes back with a, with a tiny little bit of heroin. I wonder if that was a hundred dollars worth of heroin. I don't know, but he uh, <clears throat> Dylan should have gotten there uh, when Valerie was still, you know, on the scene. Oh my god! So he could have gotten the heroin from that one dude. <laughs> that dude had all the heroin from <laughs> Afghanistan in his fucking <laughs> drawer. Yeah, so that's where the episode ended. Yeah, I mean, there's more storyline, yeah. but that's where that's that was that's the last where scene. His of, stuff ended. That's the last scene of the episode, and it's Dylan's character being ruined again. So. He's going to be on drugs again, and then he's going to have to get off drugs again. Two episodes. We had him for two episodes. I'm not, I'm not happy. No. There's no reason to do this. Like, there's enough drama. Like, he's got the dead ex-wife. Mm-hmm. He broke up with Brenda. He just got back. He's he, he fucking kissed, around with Kelly. He kissed Kelly. Yeah. Like, let's deal with that shit. But yeah. no. We're going we're gonna to put him on no, heroin. got to... <laughs> And, you know, Kelly had a coke problem, so, you know, maybe get them together. They'll just, like, go do drugs together. each other out. Like, what? What's an upper one's a down? They just cancel each other out. Oh, Between the two of us, we're in a, a functioning adults. And, yeah. So, then let's talk about Brandon's storyline. Brandon? The fuck? I wanted to see if he'd catch on to that. Um, were, you, were you hoping I'd be like, oh, wait, I don't remember what happened with yes. Brandon. Yes. <laughs> he's gone people that's what 90210 has become brandon is gone right um so who else is there donna doesn't have oh, oh donna, donna has the donna's, gang banger donna's got the gang storyline this is the most ridiculous thing it's so stupid the cousin's there for that too the cousin's in a lot of scenes she does, she's yeah. in a lot of this episode without being the focal point she's, a, she's wall, like she's a wallflower in yeah a she's like background furniture mm-hmm. but um <clears throat> she hangs out at donna's shop all the time yeah so there's these teenage girls hanging out, throwing her stuff around, making fun of her stuff. Mm-hmm. Why she doesn't just kick them out immediately, I don't know. Well, and there's a paying customer there. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's, Donna's like, that sweater looks great on you. And she's like, oh, okay, throw it on the pile of stuff I'm buying. But then these hooligans come in there and she's like, you know what, I'm going to leave. Yeah. So she leaves. They chase out a paying customer and they're treating her like shit. But Donna's like, I'm, I'm white. They're vaguely Hispanic. I can save them. <sighs> she has a problem. With she that. does. They all do. Um, so yeah, the girls, <clears throat> you know, cause some chaos and leave. One girl, they had they had knocked down some sunglasses and kicked them out the door, mm-hmm. which I thought was their way of trying to steal them. So did I. But this girl picks them up and brings them back and says, "All oh, these fell down." Well, because there's one honest one. There's yeah. one honest one among them. One that that doesn't really want to do all the bad gang stuff, but got sucked into the gang lifestyle. the The gang lifestyle of fifteen year old, uh, vaguely Hispanic teenagers, of all female in California. You know how gangs are just filled with that demographic. Um. Yeah. <laughs> But they're like they're throwing gang signs around, and and the cousin's like, they're, they're, "Didn't you see that? Didn't you see this?" And she holds up the the West Coast sign, you know the the mm. uh, the or West Side, the, yeah, West the West Side, side the, the fingers crossed thing. And it's like <clears throat> they don't know gang signs. Are nine hundred two one zero? Do you even know what gang that's affiliated with? Mm. Do, 
do good because it's not. There are tons of like the there's Bloods, there's Crips, there's ton and there there's tons of different gang signs associated with different ones. I mean, out here we do we do this, Carol. We do we do the the W. We we as in the gang because yeah, the W on top. We are not in the gang. <laughs> <laughs> the W on top, but it, it's it's pointed down, and then the W underneath. That's that's Midwest, Midwest. It's, an, it's an M. You it's are an hilarious. M and a W, Midwest. Okay. That's our gang. Sure. Did you ever? I so one time uh, we were driving through Iowa, and uh, we get pulled over by a cop that that, and I was like, what 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 were we doing wrong? And he goes, No, nothing. Um, we just wanted to let you know that there's a lot of uh, gang activity. There's uh, a lot of crips in the in the area, and uh, you know, just be be careful. Don't pick up anybody and stuff like that. And we're like, oh, okay. And as we're driving away, I'm like, Carol, <laughs> could you imagine? Like, what do you have to do wrong in L.A. to get sent to Iowa? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know, your uh, your drug numbers just aren't cutting it to the sweet Jerry. Uh, we're going to send you to our branch office in Iowa. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, my goodness. But anyway, so. Um, so, yeah, so the nice girl, the it's nice ridiculous. gang girl. But the, she goes, she says they're gang bangers, which are guy, people that kill other people. Gang bangers are people that kill other people? Well, okay, there are two things. Thought... There are two types of gang bangers. And Carol. these are girls, so I was kind of thinking the other way. No, no, she wasn't saying they were like, they were having gangbangs. Sluts? Gang... Yeah, she wasn't saying they were having gangbangs. No, she was saying they're gangbangers, like bang, bang. Oh, okay. That's what, uh, that's the the gang meaning of it. You're thinking of the pornography meaning of it. Anyway. Yeah, the cl- the cousin is like, hey, you know, fucking don't be nice to these people. Mm-hmm. But they're the girl, dangerous. The girl comes back by herself the yeah. next day, and she's like, my family is throwing me a birthday party. Mm-hmm. Like my grandpa's in town or some shit. I don't remember exactly yeah. the whole story, but it was, like, it was a big deal. Big deal. She goes. She goes. My abuela <laughs> is in town because they're trying to be Hispanic. And uh, they need, she needs a dress. And Mm -hmm. she's trying on the dress, and then she looks at the price tag, and she's like, oh, do you do layaway or anything? Mm -hmm. And this is such a fucking manipulation, because she needs it that day. So obviously layaway is not an option for something you need that day. Right. And she's like, I got a job. And so Donna's like, just uh, show me your ID and a pay stub, and I'll I'll let you take it today, and you can pay me back. And the cousin's all like, you know she's going to fuck you over. She's like, you're never going to see that money. And she's like, "Uh, you know, I have faith in people or something. I'm Donna. This is so stupid. So then later, the gang girls walk her back in there, Mm -hmm. cut the dress with a knife in front of Donna. It was cut, so I'm not paying for it. Look, it's messed up. Yeah. And then Donna's like, you didn't even go to the party, did you? And she's like, no, they wouldn't let me. After they left, yeah. She's like, no, they wouldn't let me go to the party. They said I'm out of the gang if I go see my family. So stupid. The whole thing's so stupid. You know what it reminded me of? The movie that we saw, Mavita Loca. Mavita Loca. Yeah, Mavita yeah. Loca. That's what it wants to be. Yeah. But it is not. No. Did we actually talk about that movie or did we just watch it? It's hard for me to keep straight like when we actually watch things that we just want to watch. I think we just watched it. I don't mm. think we actually talked about it on the on the show. It's a good we, movie. We we sought out Salma Hayek's first role. <laughs> yeah. It was not easy to find. No. No, it was not. It's not a popular movie. We had to go to Mexico to get we it. We did not have to go to Mexico. Oh, I'm sorry, we had to go to New Mexico to get it. That's why we were driving through Iowa. <laughs> to get to Mexico to see it. Anyway, <laughs> so that's I, nothing really happens. No, with that's that story it. That's line. the whole thing. That's that's it. And we I don't mean, know if Donna's gonna gonna white girl save them or not. She, I mean, I'm kind of thinking that's it. I don't think they're gonna bring them back next week. They we'll might see. come back. We'll see. She, I hope not. Like, I just, I, it really bugs me when they do that. And then I guess the last storyline is the. Kind of the big storyline. Steve and his mom? Yeah. Steve I don't think that's the big storyline. What's the big storyline? Dylan. Yeah. Well, Dylan and, and uh, Kelly, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this was, I guess, on equal footing with those. But, uh, yeah. So, like, last week also we found out that Steve's mom is now a lesbian. <laughs> Although they just keep calling her gay. Fancy. Lesbian. I'm gay. I'm gay. Like, lesbian sounds nicer. Does it? Don't you think? It sounds hotter. <laughs> 
That is one way. So it's so weird. Steve has this homophobia that comes up all the time, and he learns his lesson about homophobia, and then he's just homophobic again. Mm -hmm. Like, it's really weird. He outed that guy in his fraternity, and it's like, I learned a lesson about uh, being gays all right, and I'm going to stand up for this gay guy. And then it's like, later he's like, oh, those guys are fags. (laughs) And then it's like... Wait, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, I've learned my lesson. Gay people are human beings, too. And now his mom's gay, and he's like, oh, my God, I'm disgusted she's gay. Yeah. And David, who finds out through the weirdest way, because he's like, hey, I really, I want to interview you for this radio show that I have. And she's like, oh, I'm not into rock and roll or whatever. Like, I don't know why that means anything. Yeah. But he's like, no, it's alternative. And she goes, oh, alternative. I, I don't really want to be a spokesperson for the alternative lifestyle. Mm. He's like, huh? It's like, because I'm gay. And he's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. And Steve's like, yeah, let's talk alone. <laughs> he's like, I can't She's tell like, you anybody. didn't tell anybody, huh? And she's like, no. She's like, I said, told you you could tell your friends. And she's like, but you're ashamed of me. Mm-hmm. So. But so um, she, I, I had a point with, oh, yeah, David. So David talks to him later about how Steve's like disgusted with her or whatever. And he's like, come on, isn't the, isn't the thought of two women being together, uh, like, uh, hot to you or whatever. And he's like, yeah, it's fucking incredibly hot. He's like, well, there you go. And he's like, not when one of them is my mom. Right. That's so Which gross. Was the weirdest way to try to get him to accept this. Now I remember laughing about that with you. Did they actually say that? Or was that just us talking? No, that's the, that old the whole thing. sequence okay. happened. Yes. Yeah, that was dumb. But yeah, it was really weird. And and apparently David's a huge fan of his mom's. Like mm-hmm. he's like she followed me around fresh he followed me around freshman year. And I forgot about that, but it's true. Yeah, he said something about Hartley House or whatever like yeah. your mom Samantha Sanders. <laughs> I've got a friend that's never going to kill himself with a gun. <laughs> oh my god. So, yeah, um he ends up getting her to do a show. Mm-hmm. So that's good. Yeah. But uh, a lot of other things happen, though. OK, so bad to her. Uh, so somebody calls. First of all, somebody calls him at, at the newspaper and is like, hey, we're doing a story about your your gay mom. And don't you want to uh, say something about her? And he's like, hey, listen, uh, why don't you guys get your fucking story straight anyway? She's not even my mom. I'm adopted. Yeah, like, why would you say that? Do you think gay is catching? Or something like that, Steve? Well, he thinks it's genetic, which, you know, it could be. Well, okay, sure. I, there, I think there's a genetic component to it, too. But it's like, I don't know, it's just weird to be like, oh, she's not even my mom. I don't know, it's a weird thing to do. I think he thinks that if people know that she's his mom and they think they're biologically related, they're going to th- be more likely to think that he's gay. Couldn't he say that he's fucking the Asian woman? He, he could, I guess. Uh, anyways. That would have been kinder. So... She gets called into a meeting at her little The Four of Us show or whatever the fuck it's called. Mm-hmm. And it's obviously a ripoff of Just the Ten of Us. Is that what it was called? I don't know. Yeah, it was called Just the Ten of Us. With uh, It was a spinoff of Growing Pains with Heather Langenkamp was in it. She was in A Nightmare on Elm Street. Okay. I never saw the show, so. Oh, my God. You've never seen Just the Ten of Us? No. It sucks. No, Grandpa. We should watch it. It sucks. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not a that. Grandpa thing. It was an 80s show. It wasn't like a 50s show. All right. Heather Still. Langenkamp was in it. Still. I said it was a, it was a spinoff of Growing Pains. <laughs> I mean, I did watch Growing Pains. I guess it's just a shitty show that nobody watched. Yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> anyway, so I think more than one person that was in a Nightmare on Elm Street movie is in that show, too. Weird. Uh, I think like two or three of the daughters were in that show. But anyway, in the movie. Anyway, so uh, she gets called into this meeting. She's being fired because she's gay. And then she does an interview talking about it with David. Yeah, that's ridiculous that she got fired for that. They, I feel like they don't really go in depth enough into this. And then at like at the end of the episode, apropos of nothing really, other than the fact that everyone else in the world is shitting on her, she, Steve's like, I'm proud of you because you're my gay mom or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like he learned his lesson about being gay again until this comes up again, I guess. Yeah. No, I, I think he's always going to have a problem with it. It's really, it's really weird. 
Uh, but yeah, that's uh, his storyline. His storyline's pretty, pretty quick. It's just it's it's there's not. I don't have a lot to say about it because it's just him being like in every scene, him being like, "Oh, you're gay. I hate it," or whatever. <laughs> and then there's one scene where he's like, "Did you even? Why did you even want to be with a man? Did you even want me? Did you even want a son? That was so wanna, stupid. Did you want to adopt me?" And he's like, "It's getting all joked up." And so she, stupid. And she's like, yeah, holding you was like the second best thing I ever did after uh, <laughs> cuddling. I knew you were going to go there and I tried people. I tried to stop them. <laughs> she, 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 but she, I used, she used her eyes. She glared at me. I could see the no all over her eyes. Uh, but it's normal. <sighs> I didn't heed the no, so. Okay, so if you're offended, uh, late fee nineteen ninety four at awol dot com. It was all him. Oh my gosh, come on! But yeah, and then he's just cool with her again, and that's essentially it for yeah, his storyline. That's pretty much it. And that's it for the episode, I think. Right? Yeah. So again, late fee nineteen ninety four at awol dot com. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tell you- your friends about everything. Uh, you can check out the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash retrolatefee. Yes, do that. Check out our website at www.retrolatefee.com. Mm-hmm. And share the tapes with your friends. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.